we're given that angle ADB is congruent to angle ADC. So let me write that down. So angle ADB, so that's this angle right over here. They're telling us that that's congruent to ADC. ADC, so that's this angle right over there. They also tell us that angle BAD, angle bad, angle BAD, angle BAD, so that's this angle. I'll do it with two arcs because it's not necessarily the same measure as this one here. So angle BAD is congruent to angle CAD. That's angle CAD. So this is this angle right over here. Prove that triangle BAD, triangle BAD, this is the triangle on the left, is congruent to triangle CAD. That's this triangle on the right. And so they, they give the givens here. Angle BAD is congruent to CAD. BAD is congruent to CAD. Well, they've already told us that. And they also told us that angle ADB is congruent to ADC. ADB is congruent to ADC. So we've already marked that up. So how do we prove this? Well, the one thing we know, and this is almost intuitively obvious, is that the measure of this segment is equal to itself. And the reason why that's a useful thing to state explicitly is because that side, the segment AD, is part of both triangles. So let's just mark that there. It's equal to itself. So let me write this here. And the reason why it's useful is you're kind of saying, hey, look, this is a side on both of those triangles that we care about. So we could write AD is congruent to AD. And it would be by the reflexive property, which is the most obvious property that something is going to be equal to itself. So reflexive pop property, there you go. But now, by stating that we've explicitly put up enough information in our proof to now say that the left, the left triangle is congruent to the right. And the reason why we can say that is we have a corresponding angle, corresponding side, and then another corresponding angle that is congruent to this angle, this side, and this angle. And we talk about in other videos about why angle side angle works. If I have one triangle that has congruent one angle, a side, and another angle that's congruent to another triangle, it's impossible for me to draw a triangle that is not congruent. This is a basic axiom that we assume. It's a basic assumption. So now we have enough information. We can now write that triangle BAD triangle BAD, and we want to make sure we have the corresponding sides. So what corresponds to, to angle B, or vertex B right over here, is C. So it's going to be C, and then we'd want to go to A, and then D. C, A, D. And the reason is we have an angle, a side, and an angle. So let me get it. Angle, side, angle, congruence. There you go. And I think we are done. Let's see how we did. There you go.